I ended up ordering more fans because I had destroyed the two that I was uh, using initially. I ordered these, uh, this tray of six fans. I didn't exactly want to, but I knew that it would save me so much time rather than redesigning the mechanical aspects of it. And uh, I got this for including shipping and six fans and this fancy manifold here that holds them for a data center, $15, which, you know, call it, it's, <laughs> heck, it was probably more than $5 for shipping, call it like $8 in shipping, I mean. I got six fans, basically for one or two dollars a piece. They're obviously old, they're dusty, but my centrifuge application is obviously destroying them. <laughs> so, I <laughs> also tried some experiments. I wanted to protect the coil, so I added some sheet metal around it, but I think it must be using a Hall effect sensor or something like that to regulate speed. So this was screwing it up and it didn't want to work after that. So the only change I really did was I hot glued the contacts for the wires because that was the weakest point last time. I think I'm ready to run it again at top speed and see how it goes with only two ounces of fluid, which is probably still actually quite a bit to be running in this. And I don't know exactly what went wrong, but Something is sad. <laughs> it, it pretty much just stopped working. On the bright side, there was no failure. Though I can see that these cups were really, really strained. This actually almost flew off. I can see that it uh, was held on by the tape. So maybe the previous failure was in fact just from the cap flying off and then the unbalance and whacking into it as it went. There was enough vibration that it actually destroyed yet another motor. I suspect the electronics vibrated apart or something along those lines. I think uh, part of the crux of the problem is again that these aren't flat. And I think that's causing some kind of effect like this. I know this is kind of silly, but it's one of the few simple ways I can think of to hopefully create a perpendicular solution to uh, flattening this out entirely. So I'm hoping to kind of rotate this by hand as evenly as I can and just sort of skim the bottom until it's completely flat. Uh, it may not work at all, we'll find out. Well, a little bit silly, but I think it got me much closer, especially on this side, which was much worse. So I very concretely come to the conclusion that I don't have the machines to actually make a good centrifuge. I just don't. I would have to have like a CNC lathe or, or at least like a metal lathe or something to uh, get enough precision out of the right types of materials. That was a little disheartening to realize, but then I saw this which uh, doesn't look like anything important offhand, but this is all solid sediment. So in my last run, and I can tell it's from the centrifuge because of the angle, in my last run it actually did separate out most of the solids. And uh, that was at a fairly low RPM. So I think actually all I really need to do is get this working good enough and keep it at a lower speed with a lower volume of liquid to keep the weight down. And uh, the other thing is these containers can't stand the uh, force, the centripetal force that is applied when it spins at high RPM anyway. So basically the container can't withstand it, the liquid doesn't need it for separating out the solids, and more importantly, this can't really withstand it either. So I'm going to see about maybe running this closer to 1000 RPM for a longer period of time. I'm going to do a quick RPM test and just kind of get a feel for the speed. Wow, it's making me really nervous, but about the lowest this will run at before just disengaging the circuit is uh, roughly 1700 RPM. <laughs> so, it really can't even go down to 1000. <laughs> 
this stuff was already in suspension for a long, long time, and it just is separating out really quickly, much more quickly than I expected. Other than pushing my luck, I'm just going to kind of keep this set up the way it is and uh, try using it as a tool for a while rather than maxing it out and causing it to stop working over and over, which is pretty much what I've been doing. So I ran that for a minute, and uh, I should clarify, this has already been run through once before. And uh, as you can see, quite neatly, it has uh, gone to a corner. And uh, that was starting from 20 milliliters because that was what was left after the previous extraction. So I'm going to call this project good enough. I think if I ever wanted to make a really decent scientific centrifuge of some kind, then not necessarily analytical, but just one that could reach speeds over 10,000 RPM with fairly large volume of material. Still, this extraction is insane. It managed to get all of that out of a liquid suspension within probably about a minute, same as this, or uh, these suspensions. And as you can see, there's still quite a bit that is suspended. So the main thing I had wanted to test was conductivity of these particles. And this is not exactly a uh, very scientific test either, but I'm just kind of getting a ballpark reading of the resistance. I'm surprised to see that it's actually fairly low. This was probably about yeah, maybe 5 millimeters apart, and I was getting about 2.5K, which is uh, pretty low, really, considering it's not like it's graphene or even starting from graphite. About the same from the second extraction, most likely. Hard to tell. It's actually surprisingly low, too, about 23, 24K. So, yeah, this activated charcoal is, is uh, actually fairly conductive. My goal would be to make something like some super capacitors with it. I'm kind of curious. I think I'm going to leave these out and let all of this water evaporate and then just and then just see what I'm left with. In theory, what I have here is something like uh, maybe a rough, fine, super fine. Once these evaporate. So this project is good enough. I'm going to move on to other things and consider this done for now. I'll tell you guys a few things that are coming up. I've been working on converting this lawn tractor into an electric vehicle. And in other news, I finally have over 100 subscribers, so in a common YouTube tradition, I will be doing something to celebrate that coming up soon. It will be destructive and somewhat pointless. I'm also planning to add some rant videos in the future. And uh, being that it's getting warm outside again, I'm starting to do a little bit more construction and some milling on my lumber mill and uh, cutting down some trees. If you've been enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. Thanks. All right, this is a pretty good sized wedge right here. Counting this, this tree is probably about 45 to 47 years old, something like that.